how often does a city get a change of heart? This is the story of a change of heart taking place in Los Angeles today. A story you could be part of. This is Taylor Yard, a site where the city's past and future are entangled. After decades of clamoring and planning, the city of Los Angeles bought this abandoned rail yard, called the G2 parcel, for $60 million to create a park, a major puzzle piece in the center of the city's efforts to restore the Los Angeles River. Before it was a rail yard, this site on the river was a pigeon farm. Later, the Taylor Milling Company sold feed for other animals here and gave this place its name when the railroad bought the land in the early 20th century. Taylor Yard was shut down in the 1980s. Some neighbors remember the rail yard. At night, we'd hear the clanking of the train and the screeching, and it was very late at night also. It used to wake us up, midnight or so. You heard it every night. It was a constant noise, like a howling type of noise in a way. You know, it was always there. The railroad left behind nearly a century of contamination. The soil is now burdened with this toxic legacy. This history will never be completely erased. But can Taylor Yard be cleaned up enough so that people can use the park? Engineers are probing the ground to see if they can contain the contamination, cap it, or clean it up, so people can visit the site in the near future while its long-term future is debated and planned. And so today, you see out here we have a drill rig, and we're gonna go over this 42 acres, and we're gonna drill 325 samples. And we'll go down five feet, eight feet, whatever it takes to make sure the site is safe. As a historian, I understand that in some ways, the past never really goes away. The rail yard hasn't completely gone away. A Metrolink line runs through the old Taylor Yard, and Metrolink has a maintenance station on part of the old rail yard next to the future park. We used to see the puffs of smoke and really not know what that was. Later on, though, we started realizing that smoke started smelling and had the odor of diesel and really didn't know what diesel was and the harms it did since it's invisible. But now we know. Those concerns about air pollution remain with the active Metrolink yard, along with concerns about soil polluted with lead and other toxins. Peeling back the layers of history even further reveals what this place was before Taylor Yard, before the trains, the feed store, and the pigeon farm. The Los Angeles River once meandered through this site in the Elysian Valley on its way through downtown to the ocean beyond. Could this more distant past be a guide to the future? This is part of an 11 mile stretch that is the soft bottom section of the river. And it gives way to all of the life and greenery and ecology that we're experiencing here. This is unique on the river, but it is symbolic of what we'd like to see happen. This is the singular biggest opportunity that we have right now with a city owned piece of land to reclaim some of the floodplain. And as you can imagine, in an urban environment like Los Angeles and a river that's been known to flood, there's not a lot of land available that will let the river flood when it needs to flood. I wonder why people are so passionate about this one patch along this concrete-bound river. Decades of planning, organizing, and fighting over the future of the river all come into focus on this 42-acre parcel. It's a relatively big space in a crowded city. On the other hand, it's a small piece of land. You can walk across it in 10 minutes. Still, there is something about this site, and perhaps it's the distance between what was and what is, and between what is and what could be, 
that fires people's imaginations. Some see the river reclaiming its own path in the city. So years from now, many years from now, I imagine first and foremost that this fence is gone, but that this elevation isn't the same anymore, that this is a gradually sloped terrace that takes you down to the river's edge. Maybe there's water here, and that in the rainy months, the rainy months that we get in LA, the river starts to meander into the site. And I imagine that this site is sort of wild. And I see egrets here, and I see frogs here, and I see the fauna that we want to attract back to the river's edge here so that the public can enjoy it. I see uh, children running. <laughs> I see the family. I see them under a shade tree. I see a tree here that starts out, um, you know, the photo at the one-year-old birthday party out here with the photo. I see them coming back from college and, and the trunk of the tree is now this diameter. And others see a neighborhood already changing as people are attracted to the Los Angeles River and its future. Different groups have come out here to do their projects out here, which we welcome as long as we have a say in what goes on. We, we know what we like in our community. And Taylor Yard, we will also have a voice there. We will be there. And we will enjoy what's in our community. The process of planning and designing the future of the G2 parcel is just beginning now in earnest. No doubt there will be vigorous debates about the different visions of the future for people and nature here. But for now, Taylor Yard is beautiful in its own unfinished way, suspended between the past and the future. Not a blank slate, but a place with a particular history that has left marks on the landscape. Surrounded by neighbors with memories and imaginations, a place of possibilities and potential, a place for a change of heart, a place that will be shaped by the people of Los Angeles. <laughs>